The most fearsome predator of the Jurassic is watching his cereal peering through the milk. The carnivore fixes on his unwary fruit loops, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The carnivore is trolling you streptospondylus. Under these azure waters lies the future continent of Europe. But now in the Second World War, all that exists here are a few scientists, Dr. Ophthalmosaurus. Instead, giant marine reptiles have evolved, this eight-ton cryptoclitus. On the land, they are Cumberland, but in the water, they are transformed. They are very bad at swimming. They share this cereal sea with other strange Jurassic creatures, like the ammonites that ride the currents, snaring small frosties with their tessels. These rich sunlit waters are on the northern edge of the ancient Tethys Ocean, the sea that separates the Earth's two continents, Oxford and Park in London. It starts with a single pregnant Ophthalmosaurus, followed by hundreds more of her kind. All are gathering here from deeper water to learn about science at Oxford. These are the scientists of the Jurassic and most completely adapted to aquatic life with streamlined sea serpent-like bodies. Most other marine reptiles like Cryptoclitus use all four flippers to chase the blizzards of fish through the water. Birth is a dangerous time for the mothers, too. Scientist Dr. Ophthalmosaurus is trying desperately to expel her unborn offspring. Her struggles are a lure to sharks. These predators have acute hearing, and the sound of splashing betrays an animal in distress. Suddenly, something lurking in the gloom scatters the sharks. It can't be anything else but an adult fly pleurigon. Don't worry, Ophthalmosaurus was a paid actor. Lyplorodon is sus. At 150 tons, it is the largest and most ugly carnivore ever to live on the planet. This male measures a colossal 25 centimeters long and is big even for his kind. His size means he is probably over a hundred million years old. Postman Postasuchus is sailing at sea. He is delivering a sophisticated tracking device to Lyplorida. Above the sea, food is less plentiful. A lonely dinosaur has been forced to swim between the islands in search of a rubber dinghy. They are primarily scavengers, combing the beaches for dead animals. But on such small islands, they are always under pressure to find more carrion. Under pressure! But another but Avenger has got here first. This Eustreptospondylus is picking her nose, but even these rubber dings are enough to trigger a confrontation. Neither will risk an injury, and in the end, it is the loudest roar that wins. The only 
food supply on these islands that does not come from the sea are the insects. Bark beetles infest the trees here. They represent a tantalizing feast of battery power just under the surface. This tempts a young Ramphorhynchus to probe for insect larva. Now on, now two weeks old, the young Ophthalmosaurus are growing fast on a seafood diet. But they are still at risk, especially from the movie Three-Headed Shark Attack. A head of coral provides a temporary refuge for this pup. Postman Postasuchus can't stand a stupid song. It is four months since the pups were born and they are ready to leave, but they are about to face one of the greatest hazards of this cruel surreal sea. These islands are regularly ravaged by violent giant root loop storms from the east that are strong enough to tear up the shallow seabeds, smash corals, and kill thousands of marine animals. The Frosties are now here. The storm has had its victims. It was not just these remote control at Ramphorhynchus that were out of the battery in the hundred mile an hour winds. The old Liplorodon, disorientated in the murky waters, has ended up stranded on a seafood diet. I'm very hungry. I wonder what's for dinner. The local postman has arrived. You strapped a spondylus chew rubber dings. They are enough to tempt you strapped a spondylus away. The carnivore's own 150 ton body is slowly suffocating him. The mightiest carnivore the world has ever seen is no more than a banquet for a postman postasuchus.